Greetings from Novel Novels and welcome to today's video. This is my partner picks my TBR. Now, if I can, I will get him to appear in this. If not, I will put his picture on my thumbnail, which I don't know yet because I always do the thumbnail after I've done this. You might have seen a picture of him. But I decided you guys have been having a bit of that of picking up um, my books. You know, I've had a different friend every month picking a book. But this month, I wanted Chris to have a pick. I wanted my partner to have a pick. So, about a month ago, or a bit in advance, I said to him, you look at my shelves, and I want you to pick five books for me to read in August. So, you're getting a sneaky peek of what I'll be reading in August. Because that's going to come up after. But I literally gave him a choice. I did not know what books he would pick. I had no idea. In fact, he surprised me completely because I was like, I, knew, I thought he'd go for like, um, a chick like I knew he wouldn't go for chicklet, but I thought that he would pick one that would be like on the royal family because I know he's really interested in that. But actually, I'm quite impressed with the books he picked, and I'm really, really looking forward to sharing them with you. He's actually gone and surprised me because he's t he's picked from a variety of genres, although one is quite prominent, which you'll get the gist of this by the end of it. So I thought I would show you the books and a little talk about a little bit of them. It's not going to be a long video for a change, but I'll show you what he's picked for me. So the first book he actually picked was East of the Sun by Julia Gregson. I recently picked up a, another book of hers, which I'll be reading soon. But this one I picked up from my local charity shop near me. Um, I picked it up quite a long ago, time ago, because I look at the cover of it. It should have gone down for one of my video, one of my tag videos, the most beautiful cover. But look, it's got the peacock on it. It's got a really gorgeous setting. It is historical fiction. It's the probably the I think it's actually the biggest one. That I've got it's 450 pages it's historical fiction set in India so that's actually going to work for one of my goals because it's a historical fiction book set in a different era set in a different country when she woke up she went to the window and watched the sun go down on the sea and felt homesick for the first time since she arrived <coughs> a sense of vastness in India all around her it's set in 1928 in autumn three young women are on their way to India each with a new life in mind Rose, a beautiful but naive bride-to-be, is anxious about leaving her family and marrying a man she hardly knows. Victoria, a bridesmaid, couldn't be happier to get away from her overbearing mother and is determined to find a husband for herself. And Viva, an inexperienced chaperone in search of, in India of her childhood, goes from her past and freedom. Each of this has an own reason for, the, for the, leaving their homeland, but the hopes and secrets to carry do little to prepare them for what lies ahead in India. This is India in a different time era. I don't think I've read... This is a different time era as well, actually. So, yay! Got another era. So, well done, Chris. Look at this. This is absolutely beautiful. It's one I'm really looking forward to doing. I think India is obviously another thing that will be good about this is that we're obviously not, none of us are getting away at the moment. So, this is going to be a good one to have in the summer months. And imagining going away, going somewhere in, like beautiful like India, which I know is gorgeous. So, can't wait to read that. This one, I shouldn't have been surprised because he, he does love his pets. But this is Smokey the Brave. I got this was my birthday money voucher money from work. So this is actually relatively new. This I, I, I thought this would be a non fiction. It's got a cute doggy. Smokey the Brave, the world's smallest dog but with the biggest heart. Now I didn't actually Damien Lewis, I know he's a brave he's the world's number one one of the best selling authors, which is good. But what I didn't know was this is actually set in World War Two. So I didn't read the back of it. I I bought this purely because I thought the dog looked really cute. March 1944, a war-torn jungle, two survivors met and, it met and an extra formed an extraordinary partnership. One was a mysterious bundle of matted hair, a tiny Yorkshire terrier, abandoned in a Japanese foxhole. The other was a US airman serving with a photo renaissance squadron. This isn't very long, this is about 300 pages, so it's kind of mediocre. I think I should be able to fly through this. But bringing World War Two era, which is one of my favourite series in history, with a cute dog, and it's non-fiction, so it's going to meet a few more of my targets, for the, my yearly targets, and it looks beautiful. So well done, Chris. I'm quite happy with that one. Now, the next one he picked was one that Dr. Mia has been trying to lend to me for a very long time. Look at the colour! Look at these end pages! I don't want to give it back to her. She's been trying to encourage me to read it, so she, so Chris actually did listen to Mia. This is The Wolf Princess. Now, what I didn't know, 
and what I was lo I love looking up Goodreads on these books. It's only 273 pages, but it's probably one of my longest books I'll be reading at their time. It is YA in middle grade. I'm not entirely sure exactly which area, but the e but the genre of this is actually historical fiction matched with what did I say? Fantasy. So guys, I'm cracking on with a fantasy book. It's purple. It's beautiful. It's also set in Russia. Now Mia's boyfriend's Russian, so I told my my little girl's got a real thing about Russia. So I think that's why she probably picked it. On a school trip in Russia, Sophie and her two friends find themselves abandoned on a train. They're rescued by the beautiful Princess Anna. Well, I can't say it. Who takes them to a winter palace and mesmerises them with stories of lost diamonds and a tragic past. But as night night falls and wolves, wolves prowl, Sophie discovers more than their dreams in the crumbling palace of secrets. Oh, exciting, nerve-wracking. This looks beautiful. Another well done, Chris. I've been meaning to pick this up for ages. Like I said, I saw it on Mia's shelves, and she's got really good taste in books. Most we like very, very similar books. By the way, a sneaky hint to one of the coming months is that Mia is going to be picking my TBR. I think I might wait until December because she might be quite good to pick some Christmassy books. So I think I might do that, but she's going to pick some books. But this one is hers, and I can't wait to read it. So well done, Chris. The next one, I thought this was historical fiction. So this is Coffee Shop and Cabal. I picked this up last year when I was out at Julie from Hungry Bitwins when, we, when I visited her house. And I picked this up here because it looks gorgeous. Cabal, I thought it was historical fiction. What it actually is, is Chick Lit. It is 400 pages, so it's not. It's quite a long one. In a little coffee shop in one of the most dangerous places on earth, five very different women come together. So Sunny, Yasmina, Isabel and Cadence. They've all got very different things. And Kat Halajan, who's the 60-year-old den mother. So this is like five women discover there's more to, more than meets the eye. They form a unique bond that will change their lives forever and change the lives of many others. Now you guys know friendships are very important to me. I've got the loveliest little group of my friends. My best friends here are just amazing. And throughout my sister's count in that group as well it makes it even better. So the idea of a linking of friends, coffee shops, well, I love them. Can't wait to go back to my coffee shops now that they're opening. So that one looks a bit good. I don't know why you picked that. You never really told me, but I do think it's very gorgeous. Another one where I've got another book by the, sort of by the same author that I've recently picked up, which I think is the second in the series. So I've got that one that's on my shelves ready to read at some point. And then lastly, a book that I picked up on my birthday haul again, The Secret River by Kate Grenville. Now, this is historical fiction set in Australia, so I think I've read a historical fiction book set in Australia, so that doesn't really count. 350 pages, so medium length. Oh, but it's set in 1806, so that's a different era. Yay, another target to hit. Set in, in, first of all, we're in London. William Thornhill, happily wedded to his childhood sweetheart, Sal, is a waterman on the River Thames. Life is tough but bearable until William makes a mistake, a bad mistake for, for which him and his family are going to be made to pay dearly. His sentence is transported to New South Wales a term for the term of his natural life. Soon Thornhill, a man no better or worse than has made has to make a difficult decision of his life. A compelling new novel by Kate Grenville. Now, what Charlie said to me is that Kate Grenville is one of Simon from Savage Reads favourite authors. I know he loves his his Australian books, and I know he loves his Aussie historical fiction. So, if you're actually out there watching this, Simon, which I would, I know would be, he's probably too busy for that, but this is one I'm reading for you. I'm re I, he, he was the one that inspired me to pick this up, so I was quite chuffed by this. Anyway, what do you guys think of this? Do you, what do you think of the books that he's hauled me? Please let me know in the comments below. I love them. I think he's done really well. I, he's a bit camera shy, so I might get, like I said, I hope I can get a nice little picture to put in my thumbnail of him. But he's picked some really good books, and I think, like I said, December, I will let Mia pick five books for me, because she's got great taste in books. Anyway, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel and not subscribed, ring on my ding and ding, and I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.